coming to you from Top of the 12th Floor Remax World Headquarters here in beautiful Denver, Colorado. It's Adam Canto, CEO of Remax with Start With a Win. Producer Mark, how you doing, buddy? You know, I'm in REM, not the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not, how about you? Uh, how about you not steal my dope ideas? Like I know, the rest sorry. Of the internet. Oh, you got so <laughs> many people on the internet. Katie Couric reposted something I wrote without credit. I like, was like, "Come on, Katie, Uh-oh. killing me, killing uh, me." I know. Okay, wow. so for context, hey, welcome to Start with the Wind, John Acuff. We got here on the Start with the Wind uh, podcast today. We were all, you know, talking about times to get up in the morning, and and we were talking that two forty five is is a limit. You know, there's a limit to madness, and someone was saying two forty five, and John came up with this fantastic, you know, little meme. You know, you should be in rim R E M, not at the gym at two forty five. Oh, I wrote it down. I wrote <laughs> okay, it down. Okay, good. My yeah, I'm gonna tweet be that. that again. <laughs> That's right. It's yeah, no good. Doubt. No doubt. There you All go. right. So we got John Acuff. If you don't know who John Acuff is, uh, he is the New York Times bestselling author of seven books. His latest sound. Soundtracks, the surprising solution to overthinking, released this April, is already a bestseller. He's an Inc. Magazine Top 100 leadership speaker and has spoken to hundreds of thousands of people at conferences and companies around the world, including FedEx, Nis- uh, Nissan, Microsoft, Lockheed, Chick fil A, Nokia. I don't see Remax on here. Maybe we got to get him. That's why I'm on uh, this show. Uh, okay, uh-huh. let's go. I hope this this yeah. better be the doorway. This is a slippery <laughs> slope, I hope. Right there into John Town. Let's go. All right. Right, audition going on right now, John. <laughs> cool. Well, John, welcome to Start with a Win. This we've been looking forward to this. This is a lot of fun. I want to I want to dig into your new book though. Overthinking isn't a personality trait. This is about this, the book's called Soundtracks. You can see it over John's shoulder there. Uh, for those subtle, of you. I wanted a subtle banner. You guys <laughs> yeah. were able to see that we, from we, Denver. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> miss that. Bright yellow, nine feet tall. Good. You're talking about this being the sneakiest form of fear. And mm-hmm. I mean, we've all been just, it's like a, a baseball bat in the face the past couple of years during COVID is fear. It's fear, fear, fear. Everybody's throwing it uh, at everybody. It causes overthinking. Um, I want to just start off with how does this prevent us from achieving our goals? Because we see everybody just put the brakes on instead of achieving anything because they're sitting there processing too much. And yeah, and so Here's the thing. Overthinking, the way I define it is when what you think gets in the way of what you want. So you have a goal. I want to be a real estate agent. I want to start a company. I want to start a podcast. I want to lose weight, whatever. And then all these extra thoughts get in the way. And so when I started to go down this path, because there's three things that every great idea has in common, Adam. Three, whether it's starting a business, writing a book, doing a podcast. This is kind of the Venn diagram of, in my opinion, a best-selling idea. One is a personal connection. Am I personally connected to this idea? You're going to talk about it for years. You better have a personal connection. Two, the people need it. You know, when I'm at the neighborhood pool, when I'm talking to coworkers, when I'm speaking at events, do people need it? Third is, is there room in the marketplace? So when I started to think a couple years ago about overthinking, changing the way I thought changed my life. In 2008, I, I decided, I think I can be a public speaker. I had no proof, no evidence. I think I could be an author. No proof, no evidence. I had a thought. I turned that thought into actions. I turned those actions into results. That's always how it goes. So I had a personal connection. The second thing was people needed it. I commissioned a research study with a PhD named Mike Peasley. We asked 10,000 people if they struggle with overthinking and 99.5% of them said yes. And then I went to the marketplace to check it and said, well, there's a lot of resources is about overthinking, but most of them say, stop it, stop it, stop it. But why would I ever turn off this thinking machine? I'm, I'm good at thinking, what if I thought good things, not bad things? Because you and I have the benefit of growing up in the age of neuroplasticity, which is the science that teaches us you can physically change your brain by changing your thoughts. So if we know that's true, it means if you can worry, you can wonder, if you can doubt, you can dominate, if you can spin, you can soar. What if you could turn overthinking from a super problem into a superpower? And that's, once I had those three things in place, I knew, okay, I'm going to spend years of my life exploring, researching, writing this idea, and then I'm going to spend years of my life talking about it. Oh, I, well, let's get into how do you tap into the power of this then? How do you turn this into a superpower, John? The book teaches three things. It teaches you how to retire your broken soundtracks. And a soundtrack is just my phrase for repetitive thought. And I use, I use that because a soundtrack is often in the background of the moment, but it can change the entire moment. So if you think about a movie, if they play 
play an ominous song, even if it's a little white picket fence, beautiful house, it changes the moment. And so that's what a soundtrack does. And you have a soundtrack for your life. You have a soundtrack for your boss, for your job, for your hopes, for your dreams. So the first thing you do is you retire broken soundtracks, you replace them with new soundtracks, and you repeat the new ones so often they become as automatic as the old ones. And so what happens is most people don't even understand they get to choose their thoughts. Most people think thoughts just show up out of nowhere on their own. That's why we say things like, she got carried away by her thoughts. She got lost in her thoughts. Most people don't know they have the power. So even my most type A friends, we joked about what time people get up in the morning to work out. Even my most type A friends who lay out their clothes the night before they go to the gym because they know it'll ensure they go, don't pick out their thoughts before a big meeting. They don't say, hey, I've got this big negotiation coming up on Thursday, and the last one kind of went south, and I know I picked up some broken soundtracks, so I'm going to be tempted to have clenched fists in that meeting, and I don't want that to prevent a really good meeting. So here's what I'm going to have on repeat. Here are the thoughts I'm rolling in there with. And the reality is your thoughts come by one of two ways, choice or chance choice or chance. Now there will be thoughts that show up on their own, but you get the choice to entertain them and say, okay, this is a real thought. I'm going to let this drive the day. I mean, that's why when people go, you know, uh, the traffic ruined my day, you just gave the traffic, the power over your entire day. Like I lived in Atlanta. God forbid I gave that city the power to ruin every day because it would. And so the reason people have a hard time with it is they don't know they have the permission and the power to choose what they think. And they, th they become victims of their thoughts, not the kings or queens of their thoughts. So the second R is replace. So you're going to think. Like that's why the idea of stop overthinking is ridiculous. Like, so what if you could say, okay, I'm going to replace them. And that's where people get stuck. So that's a chance for you to go, okay, what would I want to be true? And the big thing is you don't have to sit down with a blank piece of paper. Like that's way too overwhelming to try to write your own soundtracks. The first thing I'd say is, borrow some of the best, like just pay attention. So one of mine that I've used for years came from Dorothy Parker. Um, she's a writer that passed away in the 1960s. And she said, the definition of creativity is a wild mind and a disciplined eye. And I think that's amazing. That's an amazing soundtrack for me to use as a writer. Wild mind. I collect sources. I How a menu was written. Something somebody said to me on an airplane. Something Adam mentioned on a podcast. It's wild. And then I have the discipline to see the connection between them. Awesome. All right. Move on to the third R here. Yeah. So you repeat them. Um, here's what's interesting. So about 48 hours after the book came out, came out in April, people would say to me, they DM me or email me and say, Hey John, my new soundtrack's not working. Like it's not working. And I'd say, well, I, I know you've only had the book for 48 hours. So I know you haven't had much time to work on it. And what happens, Adam, is we want fast results. That's just human nature. That's not something to be ashamed of. Like we all want fast results. Who wants a slow result? But what happens is I'll meet people that'll say, John, you know, this exercise isn't working. I'll go, how long have you done it? And they'll say 10 days. And I'll say, how long did it take you to gain the weight? Let's say 10 years. So you gave the problem 10 years to develop and the solution 10 days. That's so unkind to yourself. That's so, un you know, and so I wrote a soundtrack for myself. My soundtrack, one of my soundtracks is don't give the problem a year and the solution a week. So that's what replace is about. So there's times where you have to repeat the new one so that it has a chance to survive against this other one that's been doing push ups in the prison gym yard for 10 years. <laughs> and that's what repeat's about. It's, I mean, it's, it's so true. It's it's amazing because you think about it. You know, it's been said we all revert to our set point, like a like a oh, yeah. or a, you know thermostat sure. in a room, and it's that set point that people have been ingrained into them. You know, I can only do ten push ups, or I you know I I have to have so much to eat, or I have to have my beer in the evening, or you know I I can only call ten people a day for my my sales process, and only one's going to answer the phone. I mean. That's the. Do you think that's the hardest part of all this is breaking that that opportunity or that desire to return to the set point? Or I mean, what? Um, because you you look at retire, or replace. Those are conscious acts. The yeah. we're we're changing our subconscious with this repeat, aren't we? Or, or yeah, do we, and I mean. I think the, the, the challenge is giving yourself the time for it to work like any, like anything else. Um, you know, we tend to culturally, we celebrate the wrong parts of goals. So we say things like well begun is half done. The hardest part of any journey is the first step. And that feels so good on a mug or like in a photo of a unicorn on Instagram, <laughs> but like, 
if you say well begun is half done, if a surgeon said to you, once I've made the first incision, I'm like halfway done with your surgery, you would be like, where did, where did you go to school? Like the hardest part of any journey is the first step. That's not even a little true. The middle is the hardest part. Like I've never had a manager say, hey, we're at the middle of the project, the worst part. Time for middle cake. We have launch <laughs> parties. We have kickoff parties. Where do people cheer at marathons? At the beginning and at the end, the middle is lonely. And so for me, there might be kind of you have to get over that initial hill at the beginning to do the thing. But there's this whole middle section that that's really challenging where the repeat and then making it easy. Most people think a goal has to be difficult or miserable to count. So I'll meet people. They'll say, hey, I want to get in shape. And I'll go, great. What are you going to do? And they'll say, I'm going to run. I'll go, oh, do you like running? They go, no, I hate it. That's how I know it's good for me. I'm like, well, then I know you're not going to do it. Like, but like. Same with me in cycling. I tried cycling for like six months. I hated it. I hate any sport that involves getting hit by cars fairly regularly. For me, cycling is not my thing, you know? And so I think though that if your definition is it has to be really hard, really difficult, it only makes it harder to actually do versus going, I'm going to have a note in front of me. I wrote three words on a note card. I taped it up and I'm going to remind myself and I'm going to use as many reminders as I can come up with to make it as easy as possible for this to actually work. Amazing, John. And I mean, I think everybody listening to this has gotten something incredible out of the, the three R's. We have retire, we have replace, and we have repeat. So, um, John, I ask every one of our uh, guests on the show here, how do they start their day with a win? And you've given us some great ways to, to pursue your day with a win, but how do you begin yours in order to set yourself up for a greater success, get that mind right, get that body right, thinking straight? Sure. How do you start your day with uh, I mean, for for one, I put off the phone interaction as long as possible. Um, I, so I don't, you know, I do my bed. My phone sleeps in a different room. Like my phone doesn't isn't invited to my bedroom. So it charges in a different room so that I'm not, like, why make it hard? If I know I'm going to touch it, if it's next to me on a nightstand, why make it hard? Like, so I leave, you know, that's part of it is I, I try to delay the phone. Um, and then I, I usually read... 10 pages of something that's encouraging to me. And it can be a book about personal development. It can be a book about sales. It could be 10 pages of the Bible or a chapter or whatever. So I read. Um, I also will write down a couple notes. Um, and then depending on the day, three or four times a day, three or four times a week, I'll go run with a neighbor. So I've got a neighbor across the street named Ruben, and we'll go for a you know 3.1 mile run, just a 5k, and we'll process a lot of life together. I'll usually do a handful of those. I don't get to do every one. I think the, the thing you have to remember about your morning is that the more rigid you make the morning, the more inflexible it is, and more likely you're going to break it. So if you say, I have to do this exactly this way, you've just made a really fragile goal with a lot of breakpoints. So I try to be pretty flexible with my mornings, but have as many of those items in it as I can on any given day. Awesome. Thank you, John, for sharing that. I mean, words of wisdom there. John, where can we find you online? Where can our, uh, yeah. our listeners find your book? And uh, of course, everybody go place totally. an order for this. Um, well, uh, I've got a podcast called All It Takes is a Goal, which is a lot of fun where I talk about goal setting. And then um, if you want to read the first chapter of the book, it's soundtracksbook.com. Uh, I'll send you a free copy of the first chapter. It's available everywhere. And then I'm on you know, Twitter, Amazon, all the, all the social media stuff. Awesome. Thanks a lot, John. Thanks for being on Start With a Win. Thanks for having me. If you're ready to create personal and business success, subscribe to this podcast and head over to wherever you get your books and order Start With A Win, the book. Not only will you be helping yourself, but you'll also be helping children. Uh, all author proceeds go to Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, so you'll be helping others as well. Head over to startwithawin.com for more great content. And until next time, start with a win. Hey, YouTube. All right, yeah. John, dude, great, great podcast. You know, uh, so I have a question. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit of your backstory about, you know, you were just a guy working in an office and had dreams to like do other things. Sure. Yeah. I was, um, I was in corporate marketing for about 10 or 15 years for brands like Home Depot and Bose, like I mentioned during the podcast. And then, um, I hit a career ceiling in my early thirties, which is humbling. You want to hit one maybe in your late fifties and be like, ah, I'm so close to retirement. 
hit an early career ceiling and realized, okay, I've got to do something else. Like I'd already topped out in that industry. I was a con- senior content designer. There was no super duper senior content designer <laughs> above that. And so I started to write ideas online and share thoughts online because we all have this level playing field. Um, and I, that started to gain some traction for a year or two. Nobody read anything I wrote. It was mostly my mom. And then that started to pick up some traction. And that's where writing kind of came out of that. S- public speaking came out of that. And all of a sudden, I realized you can, I really genuinely believe that you can change your life. Um, I had two kids under the age of four. I had a day job. I had freelance clients. I had a really full life. And so I just started getting up earlier. I called it being selfish at 5 a.m. because no one expected me to do anything at 5 a.m. I could be selfish. And I would get up early. I'd write. And that turned into a book deal. It turned into working for Dave Ramsey for a few years. It turned into starting my own company eight years ago. So that was really the genesis, though, was going, okay, I'm stuck. What do I do with that? Which is why I love helping people that are stuck, because Mm -hmm. I feel like you don't have to be stuck. And this world gives you plenty of opportunities to not be stuck if you'll if you'll do the work but all right well hey man thanks so much for for being a part of start with a win and, and coming on the show and uh, hanging out with us for the past uh, you know 30 minutes so totally thanks for having me yeah. thanks john we appreciate it and, and uh, if you're watching this uh don't forget to subscribe click that thumbs up button because then uh more people will see this episode uh and then that little bell icon because it'll notify uh you next time the episode drops so until next time we'll see you when we see you